All right, welcome to Double OT with Maury Hirschgord and I'm Yanni Krakis. We've been on hiatus. Yep, we have. Uh, there was a pandemic where we were at home, and then we have this new studio, and there's other logistical stuff, football season. So we're back. Uh, Rosie will be joining us in future episodes, uh, but she's out today. All right, lots to get to. Let's start with the NFL. Patriots season, of course, wrapped up. Uh, big offseason, Maury. Let's get some uh, objectives, predictions. Like, what's this offseason going to look like once this team takes the field in September? Yeah, I think the first big thing, and we've we've touched on on New England Nation, and, and everybody knows watching the Patriots is the quarterback position. Well, you know, what are the Patriots going to do this offseason? Uh, and I think I think they're going to do two things. I think they're going to sign a veteran quarterback similar to Cam Newton. He might be better than Cam Newton, but it'll be similar in terms of not a lot of money, maybe more than a million dollars if the quarterback is better than Cam Newton on the field uh, and, and doesn't have the, the injury history he has. Are you in the Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, money range? <laughs> or are you like high price ticket item? Um, I think it depends. It depends how everything shakes out. What did the Jets do in the draft with Sam Darnold? What do the Dolphins do with Tua Tagovailoa? What do other teams do? Is Deshaun Watson a trade option out there right now? So I think, I think you just kind of have to wait and see I think you go in with a ton of plans, uh, and then you just have to adjust on the fly. One big thing that Bill Belichick has never had uh, in the last 12 years since they've missed the playoffs in 08 is a full off season. Last year, they had a full off season other than one week because yeah. they lost in the wild card round. So now he has a full entire off season to really look at his cupboard, see what worked this season, what didn't work this season, and then go from there. I tell you what I'm excited about uh, from a Patriots offseason perspective is I think Bill right now is PO'd For sure. and he wants to restack and retool this roster yep. and show everyone especially if Tom Brady gets to a Super Bowl or wins one it's not just number 12 that's that's why we had all the success obviously quarterback is number one the Deshaun Watson thing is uber intriguing won't happen no. because if Nick Casario takes that job and trades a franchise quarterback even if it's like a Herschel Walker Hall of like 10 picks or players the Texans fan base would revolt for sure. all right so I made a list of guys I'm fine with Jimmy Garoppolo coming back or Matthew Stafford and okay. some sort of uh, Garoppolo it seems like it could happen um, otherwise at 15 if the guy they really like is still there whether it's the third quarterback fourth quarterback I'm fine with Picking a QB at 15 and supplementing them with Fitzpatrick, who is the rookie QB whisperer. Uh, or you you get one of those veterans like a Garoppolo Stafford and you sprinkle in the second or third round QB that maybe is a Garoppolo type. Or maybe you get lucky with a Dak Prescott type who was a fourth rounder. Um, but I think the, uh, Belichick, unless it's a bona fide guy like Garoppolo or Stafford, sort of has to hedge his bet yep. with a young guy and more of a seasoned guy. Um, do we think Gilmore's back? January 7th, uh, my gut says yes, but I don't know if they get an extension done. So I think he yeah. only has one, has more, one year more year in New England. I think obviously his side wants to get an extension done yeah. because this is kind of the last time to get paid. I, I still say yes. I think Belichick values the defense too much. I think in the small sample size that we saw J.C. Jackson be a number one cornerback, yep. he got roasted against Stephon Gilmore that Monday night. We were there against the Bills. I, I think it's, it's important to have – key pieces on defense. The defense, Yanni, is, it's another thing after the quarterback. The defense is the yeah. number one thing they have to I retool. Think God, Lauren, they need to re-sign Lawrence Guy. They went from the, one of the best defenses in the NFL, maybe the best defense last year, to one of the worst defenses yeah. this year. The way they play special teams and the way that Bill relies on his defense, they don't need the offense to be super loaded like Brady sure. has with the Bucks right now. Sure. But if the defense is stacked, uh, then that just – that helps the Patriots win a lot of games, and that's kind of what they've relied on uh, because they've never really given Brady the, the, uh, the yeah, weapons around him. today. They had the biggest drop-off of any defense in the league. I want them to sign Lawrence Guy. Uh, this isn't quite hot take-ish, but I'm okay if Joe Tooney walks. You're already paying Shaq Mason. I don't want 20% of my roster for guards or whatever. I'm exaggerating, but I don't want both those guys making a boatload of money. Sure. Um, and then uh, who else are we talking about with free agent? Hightower could retire, people are saying. Sure, James White. I mean, there's a lot of players out there that... Yeah, I think I would like James White to be... Five years. I would like James White to come back. I'd like them to... What I hope they do, the year they signed Stephon Gilmore, that was day one, like hour one of free agency. I want yeah. Bill to get the best receiver he thinks out there or tight end. For sure. um, so... Uh, yeah, I think it's... regardless of what happens, they're going to spend a lot of money. And if they don't spend a ton of money in free agency, but they still pick up good pieces, move up in the draft. Make draft yeah. night exciting. You're right. They're very active in the draft, but they're never that aggressive. Correct. Like moving up 
into a first round, a high first round. All right, NFL wild card weekend. We're going to go through these games quickly. This is a great slate of games. Yeah. Um, really excited about these. All right, Colts, Bills. Bills, six and a half point favorites. I like Buffalo. I think Buffalo is the second best team in the NFL right now after Kansas City. Uh, so I think they roll at home. They're going to have however many fans there are going to be going nuts in Buffalo. So I like the Bills. I think Buffalo wins this game as well. However, I would take the Colts with the points. I see a lot six of similarities with the Colts and last year's Titans team, a team that can really run the ball, uh -huh. a team with a really good defense and a smart head coach and a comparable quarterback. Phillip Rivers can do the job. As long as he doesn't <laughs> turn the ball over, they have a chance to win. So if they can pick Buffalo off, I could see them making an AFC Championship run like the Titans, but I guess you have to go with the Bills right now. That's a tough matchup for Buffalo. All right, LA and Seattle. Uh, Seattle's minus 3.5. Uh, we haven't seen as much of an electric offense as we saw earlier in the year with the Seahawks. Uh, DK Metcalf hasn't been as outer-worldly. LA, Jared Goff missed last week. Do we know the status of, of his health going into this one? No, not right now. But I, Regardless, I, I like Seattle. Game. Yeah, playoff game. I would, I would hope he's out there. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't really get there, these yeah. chances, you know, that often. I would go Seattle as well. But L.A. always plays the Rams or plays the Seahawks well. They do. Division division rivals. I like that game, but I like Seattle winning. All right, Tampa and Washington. Uh, Washington's getting eight and a half points. Obviously, their, their stud rookie lineman Chase Young's talking smack to Tom Brady, who's about twice his age. I think Tampa's, <clears throat> until they reach you know, the divisional round or the, whether it's Green Bay or, or New Orleans, I think they're fe feeling themselves right now. Offense is clicking on all cylinders. And at the end of the day, Washington's a seven win team. I like uh, the Bucks uh, covering. I like them big. I think they win by, you know, 15 points. Yeah, I, I think the Bucks roll in this one. Uh, they've been rolling the last four or five weeks against kind of mediocre opponents. So I think this is another one. And then the big test is going to be going on the road to Green Bay if all the seats hold. Yeah. All right, Baltimore, Tennessee, Rave, uh, rematch from last year, right? Is that a rematch? Did they Baltimore, play Tennessee. Year? Yeah, divisional round last yeah, year Tennessee after the Tennessee them. Yep. beat the All right. Patriots. Uh, Ravens, three and a half point favorites. I think this is the best game all weekend. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with that. I think it's high scoring. I guess right now I, I have to go Baltimore, but man, that's hard to pick against I know. Tennessee. And I want, and of the teams that I'm rooting for, because my Eagles are out and the Patriots aren't in it, Tennessee is one of those yeah. teams at top because I just, I like Mike Vrabel and I think it'd be nice to see Tannehill finish off a good regular season with a postseason. I just got to go Baltimore though. Um, I'm realizing I haven't picked any upsets yet. I'm actually going to go Tennessee. I haven't put a ton of thought into this, but. Lamar Jackson, if, if they get down, we've seen when he's gotten down in big yep. moments and needs to go through the air. And, and uh, but, but Tennessee, are they really going to get a huge lead the way they play the game? I mean, they're really run-centric with Derrick Henry. Uh, but I think Tennessee, sort of like last year, there's, like a, there's a swagger to them. Mm -hmm. And I think Baltimore's just been like a little off. I mean, last year they won 15 games, so they've dropped down a little bit. But I like Tennessee in this one. All right, Chicago, New Orleans. Sleeper. Uh, yeah, New Orleans. <laughs> New Snoozer. Orleans, minus 10. Uh, I like the Saints. Yeah. Chicago shouldn't be in the playoffs. We didn't talk about this before, but which one team from the wild card round could you see maybe making a run to the Super Bowl? Obviously, the Hold two on, we have one more. Let's oh, do the last, last one. Pittsburgh at Cleveland. Oh, Obviously, yeah. no coach for Kevin Stefanski. Steelers, six-point favorites. They just played this past week, but yep. no Big Ben. What do you think there? Yeah, I think Pittsburgh. Just the experience in the playoffs with Big Ben, the weapons that they have, the defensive line is great. Um, and I believe they sat T.J. Watt and a couple other important defensive linemen. So similar to Kansas City, how Kansas City mm -hmm. rested week 17, they'll also have the bye. Pittsburgh's coming off of a game that they rested. Cleveland needed to win last week, so I think Pittsburgh prevails. I like Pittsburgh, but I think it's going to be a close game. Uh, so uh, I don't think they cover the six points. Uh, your question about a wild card team who can make a run. Yeah, maybe make a run. I'll, I'm going to say Tampa. Okay. I wouldn't be shocked if they win and then beat Green Bay, and then it's, it's a third time playing the Saints in the championship game. Um, they've been hit or miss so much this year, and they've sort of feasted on bad teams and have lost, you know, the two losses to the Saints. They lost to the Rams. Uh, I'm trying to think of the Bucs, other loss. They lost to the Bears. Uh, so I don't, like, trust them. But I think, I do think at this point, having number 12 on your side and, and some of those young guys sort of in a tight game, you see him in the huddle. Yeah. He's got that confidence and that experience and swagger. And you're just like, hey, we got 12. We're going to be good. Yeah. Whereas if that was Jameis Winston a year ago, you're like, uh-oh, here comes the game ceiling interception. So I'm going to say Tampa. I like Baltimore uh, in the AFC, and I like Seattle in the NFC. I understand the offense has been down, but when you look at even both sides, the NFC and the AFC, both three seeds aren't getting a lot of love, Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and Seattle. Yeah. And I think... 
the head coaches have been there for a while. The organization has good culture, good structure. They've had playoff experience before, and I think there's no reason to sleep on Pittsburgh or Seattle, especially when you're looking at kind of upstart teams like a Tampa Bay or like a Buffalo who's there for the first time. Um, it's just, so I, I lean back on, on culture and experience there. That's the one team we'll disagree on. I, I'm not big on Pittsburgh right now. I think they puttered out at the end of the season, and uh, unless Big Big Ben pulls one out of his hat, uh, I think they're going to win this week, but not but not next week. All right, <clears throat> Celtics uh, off to a good start. It's been the Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum show, but Peyton Pritchard yeah. has been a fan favorite so far. What are your early reactions to the Seas? One, it's great Jason Tatum is becoming the star, mm-hmm. the go-to player, end of game. Sure, he got lucky in the opener off the glass yeah. over Giannis, uh, but then he followed it up a couple more times You know, down the stretch. We're only nine games into the season, and I believe he has three game-winning shots in the final 10 seconds in regulation, which is big. And then where would this team be without Peyton Pritchard? You know, he's playing the right. fifth most minutes. You're relying on a first-round rookie pick that, that was towards the end of the first round to replace an all-star point guard in Kemba Walker, who you were building your Mm -hmm. franchise around just two years ago when you got him. So um, I think when you look at those two things, I think the future is bright. I think it continues to be important to win games early, Yanni, so they can get out, so that they can potentially rest guys toward the end of the season. And then also Kemba Walker is going to have to continue to be on a minutes restriction because I don't know if that knee will ever be 100% again. So if he's going to have to be on a minutes restriction for the the long, uh, big part of the regular season, then I think Peyton Pritchard, you know, has stepped up and played really well. They've, they've got six games coming up against Miami's, Orlando's, New York, and, and Washington that, that they can kind of win and maybe get off to a 10-3, and 10-5 and five start. Um, and then, you know, just kind of hover around the top three seeds in the East. Speaking of, you see your boy Gordon Hayward had 40-plus last night? No, I didn't. Oh, my God, yeah, with the, with the Hornets. Um, I've generally been pleased with the Celtics, all yeah. things considered, with Kemba Walker out. Um, I think not having Gordon Hayward in the mix – enables this to be the Tatum and Brown show. You know, that was always the the complaint or the worry when there was too many guys in one basketball, who's getting all the shots? Uh, Pritchard has been a a breakout star. I I just like, I like the way he handles like the tempo of the game. He pushes it. He seems like a heady, smart player. Um, I just, what, how do you feel about the big man situation with Robert Williams and Daniel Tice? I just don't feel great about them still. I don't. I keep waiting for Robert Williams to make the proverbial leap, and he really hasn't. And I think they got exposed at that position. So I still think that's going to be their 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 spot of need um, going forward. But um, so far, so good. I think. I mean, you know, what are they? Seventy-two games this year. Forget how many. Something they like have. that. Yeah. Uh, Less than the. 82. It's a long haul. I think they'll be. You know, what seed do we project them to be? Top three. You would hope. You would. <clears> think. They were the three last year. A lot year. of good teams in the East, though. Now. You know, yeah, Brooklyn, Miami, Milwaukee, yeah, Philadelphia, Philadelphia. I know your so, Sixers out to a good start. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of teams, but they need to make a trade midseason. Yeah, they, they need to go get a superstar to get over the top because they're just going to be in the same spot. They're going to be Game Seven of the Eastern Conference Semis or get to the Eastern Conference Finals and fall short. I don't even think they need a super. They just need someone at the deadline. Every year we were waiting for Danny to do something. And <clears throat> would you have done the Harden deal? Or a potential Harden deal? I do the Harden deal because you miss your window and LeBron went to L.A. before yeah. Durant and Kyrie went to, <laughs> yeah. went to Brooklyn. So you had one year two or two, three, year, two years. I think it was two years there. Yep. So you missed your window yep. there. And now if, if it looks, you know, they're, they look to have some, some early season issues that I'm sure they'll iron out later on. But it's important for the Celtics to try to get over that hump while Tatum and Brown yeah. are still young because the longer they get into these – these deals, and I know Jalen Brown, I believe, is on his first year of his new extension. Uh-huh. If you get to year two or three of that, and you still haven't gotten at least to the NBA yeah. Finals, he starts thinking about going elsewhere. Being a GM for an NBA team is brutal, because these got, no one's happy. No. <laughs> no one is happy. All right, big uh, hockey news uh, with Zidane Chara signing with the Capitals this week. Um, <clears throat> I think as a Bruins fan, collectively, we were all, we, all like, oh, like he's not making much money with the Capitals. This is BS. Like He's the captain. He's been here 14 years. Um, but you have to respect the B's transparency with all. Yep. Hey, you're older. You're slower. Here's a role where you're not starting every game. We're trying to develop these young guys. And at the end of the day, Char either needed to retire, take it. He, if he still thinks he has more, like every aging player does, Go to the cap. It's fine. Like, don't be bitter. Like, everyone's like, the Bruins are cheap, blah, blah, blah. It'd be great if he could stay. 
but overpaying him to stay wasn't the move either. So it's sad to see him go. <clears throat> but hockey is one of those sports too. How often do we see guys in the twilight of their careers finish with different teams? I mean, a guy like Yarmir Yager has been playing at 40 plus for every team in the NHL. So right. sad to see it happen, but I guess not overly surprised. Yeah, I think I look at it in two ways. One, it's only 56 games, Yanni. So with an older guy, could you have squeezed one more year out mm -hmm. of him because it's not 82 games? Right. Could you have maybe had him play 40 of the 56? And that's almost 80% of the season where on an 82 game slate, you have to play 65 plus, which probably wasn't capable before a long playoff run. The other way to look at it is, well, if there is one season to have Char leave right. and young guys to step up, yeah. instead of having to play a full 82 games, right. it's to play a 56 game schedule. Do you think so, he needed assurances from the Bruins? I need to start. I mean, it's all, it get awkward when you have the C on your jersey. Yes. And you're not starting. I think, yeah, I think for him it was more about playing time and role on the ice than it was about money. I think he would have taken less money yeah, had his role right. been increased. Yeah. And I th someone had said that he wanted to stay, can't be in Canada because of the, the rules during COVID. He wanted to be near his family. I don't think he's uprooting him out of Boston, so D.C. Uh, works for him. All right, finally, college hoops. Uh, URI Providence and Bryant well into their conference schedules. We saw the Rams lose last night at Richmond. PC plays Xavier um, on Sunday, and Bryant uh, plays in about an hour against Central Connecticut. What are your big takeaways? Yeah, so with Providence, the, the big overarching theme is Villanova and Creighton are top 10 teams. Can they be that third team where they mm -hmm. were slotted to in the preseason? Can they be the best of the rest in the mm -hmm. Big East? And by that, I mean you have to sweep the St. John's of the world. You have to sweep the Georgetowns. You have to sweep the Marquettes. You can't afford a loss to a team like Butler without his best point guard like we saw a couple weeks ago. You don't have to go beat a Villanova or a Creighton. Mm -hmm. If you get swept by those two teams, you just have to, to beat all the other teams below you to ensure you're third in the Big East. But as long as they're third or fourth in the Big East, they'll make the tournament. Yeah, specific to Providence, I, I was talking uh, about this with KMAC last night, is like, Last year and in, in, in previous years, when they had five, six teams that were ranked, you knew your schedule would allow you to yep. maybe go 500 a little bit above and you'd be fine. But as you mentioned, Villanova and Creighton, and no one else is like ranked right now. So can they clean up on the bottom feeders or the, the middlers of the Big East and become the 3-4 team? Because at the end of the day, how many teams get in out of the Big East? Big East, they're projecting about five <clears throat> right now. Five. Right. So since realignment or the new big east pc has always sort of been on the bubble or right. in that mix and they got in five straight years so um but specific to their play uh duke's been great watson's been great and it's just sort of needing that third piece so reeves has hit some big shots uh, uh who's your guy that you need to step up yeah i think it's jared bynum as long as he's not you know not injured you he's know got we'll, a groin we'll see he's got a strained groin ed coley said he's day-to-day -day right now they play a game on Sunday and Tuesday back to back. You know, if he's not out there, you know, then you start to worry. I think it's he needs to bring a, a level of scoring and, and a continued level of identity on the offensive end to get them in the flow. Because when he's out, a lot gets put on David Duke's shoulders yeah. that he's already carrying the team. You know, in terms of minutes right. and in terms of points per game. Now he's tasked with getting the offense in a rhythm. I think it's a lot for for him. And he'd tell you that he would take it. You know, and and yeah. run with it in stride, and that that he's capable of doing it. But it's a lot on a game in game out basis when you're getting the best defender on the other team yeah. to guard you and teams are trying to attack you on the other end. Uh, Rams, they're, they were hitting shots last night, but the turnovers ultimately k killed them. Um, A-10-wise, it's not like last year where the Dayton was the prohibitive favorite. I mean, you or I has to win the A-10 tournament. I mean, what would they have to do in the A-10? I mean, how many uh, out-larges is the A-10 going to get? Yeah, probably just one or two. St. Louis is ranked right now, and, and if they become the Dayton of last year, then maybe they're the one that's automatically in VCU's regardless. in the mix. VCU's in the mix. St. Bonaventure's in the mix. I mean, a team's going to have to go rip off, you know, out of 20 conference games, win 17 of them in yeah. order to solidify an at-large this year. But I who mean, knows if you'll even play that many games. Right. So I don't think, I don't, I don't think there's really going to be that many at-large from the So I, at least the A-10's fairly wide open. Yep. Yes. So there's – if – if you know, Island plays a perfect game, they can beat anybody. And, and David Cox sort of inherited this jigsaw puzzle of different pieces and transfers, and he's still trying to figure it all out. Obviously, they lost one of the Mitchell twins to injury, but they're still trying to figure it out. I mean, we saw Leggett pop one day, and then we saw, you know, Jeremy Shepard's had good games. But it, it, other than Fats, and Fats is, you know, pretty 
I don't want to say hot and cold. He's a all-conference player, but he's streaky. He is, for sure. Yeah, no doubt. If he's not hitting shots and they're turning the ball over, they're going to get, you know, blown out. No chance. Yeah, I'm not super high on the Rams right now. I have to see a little bit more from David Cox's squad. And, and then I think just enough of the excuses. Like, this new program, new team. You yeah. know what? They were just off for a whole week. They were off for three weeks before comp- – what felt like three weeks before conference play. They're on game 11. And they're on practice number whatever, yeah. 50. Sure, it's not practice number 100 like it right, normally right, is during right. a regular but season. But everyone's dealing and with it. And game 17, everyone's dealing with it. And they've got a lot of experience um, coming from, from higher leagues, transfers down. So that those excuses have to end. I'm just not high on the Rams right now. They should have lost the game to St. Joe's. And we'd be talking about this team in a completely different fashion. Yeah, squeeze that one out in overtime. All right, and Brian, been pretty fun to watch. High they, pace. Yeah. yeah. Are they the best team in that EC? For sure, no they doubt. They are? Yeah, for sure. Man, yep. what if they get into the dance? I think they will. They're, the, they're definitely the favorite in the NEC, and they definitely have the most talent. I'd have to go and in my the opinion, they have the best coach. Coach. They, Have they ever made the tournament? I don't think as they a division have. one team, not as haven't. a D one team, because nope. O'Shea took over and they came from D two and they've never, yeah, they've never gone. For all the hoops junkies out there, the new net ranking, the NCAA evaluation tool yep. came out. Providence was seventy seven. Yeah. Rhode Island was 78. Yeah. Bryant was 91. I know. Not that crazy. Top 100. Like, uh, I remember last year, Brown and Bryant were in the hundreds. Two. Bryant was in the 200s. <laughs> 200. All right. So what number net do you need to be to be a bona fide at-large candidate? Oh, at-large? Probably top 40 if you 40, want to be yeah. safe. Yeah. Okay. And, and Bryant's will slip naturally because they go play Central Connecticut State, who's right. like 310 right. or something like that. And they like played that. Syracuse and, other and UMass. Yeah. yeah. I, they could easily be 9 and 0 right now. And they, in my opinion, would have a vote or two in the top 25 national poll. Um, but, yeah, no, they're fun to watch. It's nice. fun when you score 100 points a game. Yeah. All right. That'll do it for this edition of Double OT. Whole episode on WPRI.com, podcast on iTunes and. I don't know where else. Uh, and of course, on social media at M. Hirsch Gordon at Yanni Caracas. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.